in last week's episode, our team made it through the first big descent of the Aguanish River and started working on the big drops going into and out of Lac Pado. We had a couple perfect nights on sandy beaches, but we also had to deal with some gnarly portages. Welcome to the Land of Wild Rivers. We get a morning after from the belly button incident that happened yesterday. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be the same. Okay. I think I think based on where where all my bites are, it's pretty clear that the bugs know how to get through these holes. So. My body's demolished. My head hurts. My shoulders hurt. My knees hurt. My back hurts. My heart hurts. Everything hurts, but I'm still having fun. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm telling myself that. Our team is nearing the end of the second big crux of the Aguanish River. This section has required a lot of work and mental stimulation to portage, line, and run these technical sets. Once through this section, our team has our eyes on a long stretch of meandering river that should allow us to paddle a good distance. Nice to have the alders fighting you. <laughs> like, yeah, these rocks weren't enough. Boys, we made it. Keep it out. Good. into the hole again. Got the heart pounding there, fellas. Got the heart pounding. We got to a couple sections that we can actually run. Nice boys. Okay, forward. Okay, back pedal. Do you see the seam in the left? Yeah, we want to do a little more. Yo, pedal hard. Rock here. 
Yep. And now get into that engine. That was awesome. Love that. Hey, we're going to push off. Whoa, we're farming. Twice today they made very sketchy moves. That's not good. That's really not good. One of those moves could end the trip. What happened? Man, we, we, we had our line and then and then we got a little too left and then we just had to straighten it out. Like we got we got way too river left and then and then we were fighting to get back to get on that right side and luckily we just nicked the right side of that hole and that was like almost a i thought that was a trip ender right there here and the big rock that we wanted to avoid was here so i was trying to get a little bit left of this top one and then book it hard right but we didn't initiate the right early enough so like we were already too low and then it was like paddle hard paddle hard paddle hard and we just like didn't get over far enough to the right to beat that rock yo it's all good it happens. The, you know, from, from where I was, at the top, we were lined up perfectly for just a smooth run out. Like, yeah. we could have just, I, like, I felt like we could have just gone, like, just straight. Yeah. That's basically what we did. We, we just did that one extra draw at the end, and that, that was my bad. I shouldn't have called that. No, it's all good. Everyone's here. Boats are in one piece. We're yeah. in one piece. Yeah. We have finished the second crux of the trip. We just got through a monster rapid section around Lac Pado and we didn't have any injuries. We didn't lose a boat. We have no leaks in our boats. We are very excited to be done with that section because there's a lot of opportunity to really hurt ourselves. All the rocks were super slippery. Uh, there were some big moves we had to make. We, had, we, were, we were forced to either line big burly sets of rapids or portage through boulder infested, alder choked shorelines. Uh, There's no easy route through some of those sections, but we worked as a team and we were all able to get through safely. We now have something like 35 kilometers of meandering river for the afternoon. And it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we'll probably get the solar panel out and uh, maybe even uh, go for a swim and catch some fish. But we are very happy and very thankful to get through that section. Earlier this morning, we were going through steep, rocky terrain, and then out of nowhere, sand dunes everywhere. And now the, the river meanders, and we're, we're sunken in this deep sand, surrounded by sand dunes, really, big sand dunes. The sand canyons of the Agunish. It is weird, it's like we're on a totally different river, and now it's like more of like a, a lazy battle. We have this for about 35 kilometers before the next obstacle whatever that may be. 
but we're enjoying it. It's different. It's sunny. Getting a nice little tan. Bugs aren't too bad. We absolutely crushed distance today. I think a, somewhere around 39 kilometers for the day, and most of those kilometers were done after lunch. We have a beautiful sandy campsite with a nice sunset. Morning, boys. Morning. How'd you sleep? Beginning to end. Nice. <laughs> it is the morning of day eight for us and the morning of day 24 for Matt and Noah. It is a scorcher already. It's about 6.30 in the morning. We were up at 5.30. Bit of a cold night last night, but the, the morning has cleared up and it is, the sun's not holding back. So we're just kind of finishing packing up camp right now to get on the water. We need to have another big day today. So we crushed out about 39 kilometers yesterday and uh, we're hoping to do at least the same again today. We're a little bit behind schedule. I think uh, maybe some of the lower water that we had this year might have slowed us down a little bit in the upper sections of the Aguaniche, but uh, we're hoping that on these flat water sections, the current's flowing. We're able to make up some of that distance and have a good day today to get us back on track to get out of here on time. So what is shown below us for today is not as gnarly as what we did yesterday morning. Yeah. It is going to be hot today. It's still the morning and it's already 
Like temperature so hot it'll burn your skin. So that hydration is absolutely key. So we're rocking six liters in the boat right now between two one liter Nalgene's, one each, and then a, a full four liter bag. And that'll get us to like lunchtime. And not only do we need to hydrate, we need to make sure that our salt is balanced in our bodies. So because of that, we have Mio Sport, which has electrolytes in it, which we'll be using throughout the day. And it also tastes really good. So we just gotta go right, that's all. Take the tongue on the right and splash through. So we have arrived at a massive waterfall. Uh, one of the bigger obstacles that we need to get around today. There was a really rocky, kind of technical uh, rock line that we had to take along River Right. These big waterfalls sort of just like come out of nowhere and all of a sudden you have a monster feature you have to get around. But luckily we all have good hearing and we're able to not paddle over the waterfall. You can hear the rumble pretty far away. <laughs> a kilometer back or so setting us up well to crush some distance for the rest of the afternoon. So uh, we'll see what we're able to do to uh, get back on track here. That thing's a tank. 32 and a half. Woo! Okay. 32 and a half inch pike. Biggest fish of the trip. Got him back safely. That's what you like to see. Yeah. If you're gonna come out with one spoon or one lure, the red and gold little Cleo, multiple sizes, can't go wrong. You said the canyon was at 80? Yeah, canyon's at 80. And we're at around 135 right now. So in the next two days, we need to get to 80. Which is like 55 kilometers-ish in the next two days? Yeah. We're just stopping for lunch right now, and we have a couple goals in mind for the next few days. We need to put in distance when the, when the conditions are good because we have a known full day portage coming up. We want to line ourselves up nicely for that. So the next two days, we need to bang out 
uh, a decent amount of this upper section to line ourselves up nicely for that portage as well as when the weather's nice. Uh, there is a bit of a headwind but we are making progress and there aren't too many obstacles so quick break and then we'll get back out there. Say bronze babe earlier? Yeah, look like I kind of look like a bronze babe. I want to come home, people are like, yo, would you guys go to Cancun? Nah, yeah, Greenish. We're also in a very cool area in terms of uh, a geological perspective. You know, this rock we're on, this Precambrian rock, it's about a, a billion years old. And when you look at it, you can actually see how it's been influenced by glaciers. You can see chatter marks as well as striations. Chatter marks, it almost looks like it's been chiseled. There's little like scoops along it. Striations are more so like a scrape across it. And on top of that, then you have uh, ero mechanical erosion from water constantly hitting it, smoothing it out, making divots even larger and more undulated. A lot of different forces are played on these rocks for the last billion years to shape them how they are today. There's also a very cool feature to my right here. Uh, sometimes in formations like this, a groove becomes a, a deposit for rocks and that as water goes in, it actually swirls the, ro the rocks around and continues to like erode away into like a deeper groove. And there's a spot right here that's a great example of how that works and you actually can still see the rocks inside. And just think about that over a long period of time, slowly grinding away, making that hole a little deeper and deeper. We just pulled up to a, uh, a shoot of sorts and she drops down and she goes far. And we have a, uh, we have to figure out how we're gonna get down there. I'd be nervous about committing to that side and then getting stuck on an island over there. I think we can find our way through this side. We are fueling up right now so that we've got the energy we need to crush out. How long would you say this is? Like, I'd say, yeah, at least 400 meter portage around some pretty gnarly terrain. We think we might have found a clearing with some caribou moss that we might be able to walk through to make it a little easier, but we definitely know we've got a big task ahead and uh, we're just about to get going here. Oh, we got super lucky with that portage. Not as bad as we thought. We thought we had to go all the way past the next set, but we found a pool here, which you can actually paddle across and potentially line the bottom. So overall, we hyped this up, and sometimes you need to hype up a portage for it to, for it to not to be as bad as you think it's gonna be, right? It's, better, it's much better that way than the opposite, where you think it's easy and it ends up being very hard. So we're stoked, we're feeling good, and we're gonna keep going down river. We literally have the straight shot now, brother. Yeah. Keep us left. Battle hard. Yeah. 
Yeah, boys! It is 8 o'clock Atlantic time. We put in a full day's work. We got pretty far too. We had a strong headwind, we had a couple shoots to go over, a couple waterfalls, and some of the biggest white water that we've hit on this entire trip. Great day, beautiful weather, some good laughs, and now we're just getting to camp. The thing is with some of these areas, the, uh, the river's starting to get braided a bit, and in these sections, it gets very shallow, so we gotta walk this all over to camp. But there's a very nice beach campsite for us. We're really hungry tonight and we wanted more food, so I'm making bushcrafty garlic bread with an extra. No way, is that actually what you're doing? Well, it's gonna be like, I brought like a few extra bannocks that we could just kind of fire in if we're having like soup one night or something. So I'm gonna do that and then the coating that goes on it is like a Parmesan, okay. Parmesan fennel rosemary type mix. So it'll be like close to a garlic bread to go with our spaghetti. Wow. Uh, during the spring melt, this entire area would have been underwater, but for us, it makes great camping. Flat, open, nice. The boys are getting dinner ready, the sun's already set, and it, we have a very short night at camp tonight because we worked so hard on the river today that we didn't get to, that we didn't get to camp until about 8 o'clock. We're racing sunset to get everything done before bed. Yo boys, coffee on? the coffee is ready and the water is boiled for breakfast. Not coming. <laughs> Not coming. We have blended coffee this morning. Mo mostly uh, True North. Morning guys. The sky is looking quite muggy. It's pretty warm out. And it's probably gonna dump rain on us today. It might be a dry pant day. Who knows? Does it not scream torrential rain pour today? I do, I do feel like you can kind of feel it in the air a little any bit. Any minute, literally any minute, it could open up. I feel like it's raining right there. See that like that next hill over the horizon? Yeah, it does look. It does look. That looks like rain. Like rain. One thing that spooks me with these weather changes when it's gonna rain and there's no structure in the sky. It's all just gray. You know you're in for a day of it. I'm just like I'm not, I'm not in the canoe.
ladder right here when we're going to down. rainy on and off all day with a strong wind but luckily this river is going down at a very at a very low grade so we've been traveling really quickly because there's all these small swifts and we've been it's about noon and we've already gone probably about 20 kilometers so the final big crux is this monster canyon portage it's about 2.5 kilometers around it apparently very tough um, we anticipate about a day's worth of travel to do it. And we're gonna, the plan is to get there tonight, but we've been traveling so fast that we don't know, we might even get there sooner. We'll have to make the decision, do we start it today or do we start it tomorrow? A little chilly. I'm cold too. Yo, battle flap in the middle. <laughs> we have gotten to the canyon and it is very intimidating. We're pulling up and on either side is a sheer, it's almost like a sheer rock face that goes straight up. And we know we're gonna have to portage this. So, uh, we have mixed emotions right now. But we're gonna go see if we can find Guidor's cut marks from 1985. Because I, th I, think, I think that might be our best bet. We expect this to take a full day tomorrow. So anything we can do tonight may help. This is pretty crazy here right now, trying to find a place to start a po the start this portage around the canyon. This is just a big cliff here. That's definitely not the start. But we're trying to figure out a way that we can poke into the woods somewhere. Might as well spend uh, part of the day today trying to figure out where the best route is so that we can get this all sorted out before tomorrow. Crazy. So, so we were walking through here, we noticed that like all these branches were like optimized for, uh, for a canoe just cut through here. 
and we look down, we see a couple cut uh, cut logs down here, cut trees down here. So we're thinking that this is this is some sort of path for the oh, canoe. You boys, can boys, boys, tape on the tree. Ew! <laughs> so in 1985, Guy Doris said he, in his notes, he said he, they, they made the trail and they also flagged it. So this that might be like that. That's a 25-year-old flagging tape. That's yeah. solid fine. That's such a solid Ooh. fine. So where Yo, I'll go? tell you one thing. This is way better than the billy goat trail we tried along the side yeah. of that mountain. Yeah. This is huge, man. Like, I was walking over here, and I'm like, this is going to be totally messed up. Man, they definitely came up where I came up there, too. I was, it, was, it was just a clear path up here, man. A clear path. Okay. All right, so, like, where would they go from here? So they came this way. Then they would have seen this hill and then that. Yeah, so what's the path? Not much. Not very much. No way! A shoe! Looks like an old rubber boot. A shoe is a good sign somebody walked there. No wow. And like the next like we like we need to find another cut cut to be like sure where like try to find the trail. Because it either goes this way or it goes that way. Like it doesn't go like this way. Yeah. No. But there's a boot. I don't know what that means. Like, this looks pretty Oh shit, look at this, it's an old boat. It's like this, yeah, this is an old boat. Like a cedar strip canoe. Watch your foot, or watch your feet. Holy smokes. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> That's... We just walked right over it. Holy smokes. It would be pretty messed up for them to hike along the side like this, you know? You think it went all the way up then? Could be. Like, wouldn't you? Like, if you were thinking, like, you'd maybe look down below, but like, if you saw that big mountain, you'd be like, yo, let's just get to the top. Yeah. And then it's, it would be pretty clear sailing. We kind of went up this way, so there's there's no like they went up. Yeah, we got to the top. You did? Yeah. Is it clear? No. Like this might take two days. If it's like this. Yeah. I think we need to have a, need to have a team meeting and like figure out what we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, like it's literally like you can't walk in a straight line for more than a meter. Yeah. And it's like fallen trees and it's a lot of new growth too. Yeah. But we got to the spot where it, it flattens out at 200 meters, and then they take that right across. How do you know? Uh, based on, on the map. So the hardest part, the thickest part is right here. And it's so thick up there, but there's like, there's a little more room. So there's gonna be like a lot of like, we need to saw a trail. <laughs> we'll never get out of yeah, here. Yeah, okay, well then. We were talking okay, about that. Okay, listen, yeah. okay, but this is the thing with this. The, the issue but, is but how? The, like cliffs, if, the cliffs there, like the cliffs that we, we were walking on, they extend all the way up there. So if we walk this way, we're gonna hit those cliffs and then we're Yeah, so like, like, that's the thing, there's no trail. Through. There's no trail at all. It's all grown in, it's all new growth. You don't have another option other than to go this way. Other, unless you go further in and you go all the way to the top. So then, like seeing how, see how steep this is here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um, the thickest growth is on the sloped. When like when you're up there, it's not that bad. Like we're gonna have to blaze, but it's nothing like this. Yeah. So I, I think once we get all our stuff up here, I think this first part yeah. will be tougher than this part. And yeah. and I think I agree. With that. Like yeah, like like getting up there, like this is the thickest stuff that we saw on our scout. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is as thick as this. Honestly, I think like it's gonna be really hard, but that's just what we have to do. No, no, I'm, I'm into it. So then, I guess the next question is, do we try and get everything to the top tonight? No way. No, there's no, no way we can't do that. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think we get two guys to start blazing the trail tonight. There's, there's no way. It might, it might take all day to get this up to the top. Yeah. Like, and, and like, I wish I had like a like another solution. But... No, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. Like, I'm not like I'm like okay, let's do it. But it's just like I, I just don't understand how these guys did it in a day. Yeah, well, like a lot of the stuff up there is new growth, like in in the last ten years. All right. This could be a two, like a two day portage now. Yeah, it's six. We have three hours of light left. So, okay, let's go. Let's go to the boats. Figure out where we're gonna camp. Okay. Two of us will grab saws, and well, I think like we should like this is the stuff that we can't get a canoe through physically right now so we need to cut a trail through it and we can do that tonight but like yeah. i don't know about like going all the way up yeah i think boat we have to just be up really early tomorrow like up with the sun yeah yeah we have to. i think it's safe to say we're going to be spending a night up there though too so the other thing is like water water we need I to come up with that we need to come up with a water strategy like sec like so it's going to be like bring the two dirty platypus bags full two clean platypus bags full all our analogies full yeah yeah I, I think it's it's a, it's a safe thing to say like mentally prepare yourself like it's gonna be the hardest portage for any of us ever yeah like it's gonna be f yeah yeah <laughs> let's yeah. go yeah. That's enough to get a canoe through anyway. Yeah, definitely. This looks pretty good right here. Yeah, nice little open section. Yeah, good for a little bit. Probably enough to get a canoe by. There we go. Nice. Oh. It smells like Christmas in here. You guys saw how thick the woods were earlier. We have been hard at work, Matt and I, blazing a trail to the top of this mountain. It went from a very, very, very thick forest to a reasonable path that we've, uh, that we've cut through now. Nice and clear versus that. Whew. Very manageable. so bad. Eric and I are at camp right now, getting dinner set up, setting up the tents while the guys blaze the trails. And the guys made a lot of progress with the trail they've been blazing, and that gives us a lot of hope that we can get out of here in one day. We'll see though. It's thick bush and the route we're following after a little more research with our notes here, it sounds like Guy Door actually took the opposite shoreline. And on the right shoreline is the route that the Agunish trappers took way back in the day. And that cedar strip canoe that we found that was decaying might have been from an Agunish trapper, which is very cool. We decided that it's in our best interest to follow the Aguinis Trapper route, which skirts the mountain along the right shore of the river and blaze a trail for the next generation of Aguinis travelers. Holy 
smokes. Yeah. What a day. What a day. I mean, honestly, the first three quarters of the day weren't too bad. It was, it was really easy. Actually. The last quarter of the days where it got really hard. But that was very gratifying work to look back on that trail. It was. Oh man. I feel like it'll be less gratifying climbing it tomorrow, but no, it's gonna be sweet because we'll be thinking of how crappy that would have been if we hadn't cut the trail. I like that. Every step is gonna be like, well, could have been worse. Could have been worse. 